On today's show, we get into the spooky spirit with a pop-up at the Alden House Haunted House. Experience a paranormal convention right here in Plymouth. Talk about upcoming events in our South Shore towns. Hear original poetry and from some local scene staff about horror movies they recommend and why. We're glad you're here. Let's get started. In late September, horror author and paranormal expert Sam Baltrusis invited lovers of the occult to Paracon, a weekend of ghostly lectures and haunted festivities. We went on the local scene to the John Carver Inn to watch the magic happen. So this weekend, just a bunch of weirdos from all over the country are coming together um, to kind of share their areas of expertise, their knowledge, um, their passion with all things strange and unusual, ranging from dark history, ghost stories, folklore, um, and everything that goes bump in the night. <laughs> So MassCon this year is, has a focus of women in the paranormal, and I think that's amazing because you don't see a lot of female teams on TV anyways. You don't see a lot of females coming forward and sharing their, you know, we call it women's intuition or whatever, but um, it's really awesome to be in a space where women can talk about it openly and share experiences and know that we were all experiencing very similar things. So to me, it's very exciting and I think it's about time. I am thrilled that there is a raised awareness now of women in, women in the paranormal and that women have made meaningful contributions to the field and are active and productive members of this community. And I'm really glad that they're finally, women are finally getting a spotlight on it and people are more aware of it. Women are really good at this actually because the way we multitask, which is slightly different than the focus that men have, it's, a, it's actually a skill we are good at. Whether we're looking at the clairvoyant, the media, the, the psychic on the shoot or, or the tech person, so I think empowerment means just we're taking our place. Light and dark are turning, luck be in the burning. Black spirits and white, red spirits and gray. Mingle, 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 hooray. Out and out, out, around and about. A world within and a world without. The good come in and the ill stay out. I was that kid who just was all in, like I watched all the shows, I read all the things, I listened to the radio, um, and I had Karina as an older sister who, you know, we could talk about these things. As kids, we'd play Spot the Spirit. I was skeptical of myself for many years, and then it wasn't until I became, you know, 15, 16, where I realized who I was seeing, and they had passed years before I was born, and the messages came true, and so I've always, I've always been a believer, but skeptical of myself. Um, I met Leanne in high school, and we played volleyball together and she started talking about things that I considered at that time very weird. And, but I had fun with her, so I kept spending time with her and ended up at her home with her and her sister Kareen and watched them play Spot the Spirit and talk about crazy things and I witnessed crazy things and, and then they took me out into the first haunted location and ever since that it's been nonstop. I was a little kid. I just knew that those so-called imaginary friends were just not imaginary. And I think kids really do have this gift, but it just gets taught out of us in our modern, Western, non-magical, non-mystical society, everything that's left brain focus on things. And it just didn't get taught out of me. Mom was like, yeah, Grandma did that. And I was just obsessed with the dead. But it was never in a dark or morbid way. It was just like they had so much to say. So I literally did my first seance, which is one of the things I'm known for. I was seven or eight years old in my little suburban Los Angeles home, went in the hall where there's no windows and doors, stuffed towels under the doors, and my little windowless hall filled with lights and orbs and shadows and sounds. And as I went screaming outside, I was jumping up and sat down at the same time going, this is real and this is something we can really control. And now for the living one, the dead. With the ringing of this bell, we lift the, the veil twixt heaven and hell. To call the spirits to us now, as we make this sacred vow. We are between the worlds. My, my most intense experience was in San Antonio um, with a particular spirit who had been roaming there for quite some time. And just witnessing him and acknowledging his experience and being able to be shown the different points in his journey 
and speaking it out loud and then feeling the release that he experienced in that moment when I was able to speak it for him, that is probably one of the most intense things I've ever felt in my life. My most intense moment was when I was doing a seance and I was at a very haunted, very famous house built by Charlie Chaplin and the Rolling Stones lived there, Marilyn Manson lived there at the time and somebody burst into flames. Literally, angel wings of fire up his back, one of the cameramen, it was caught on camera, it was caught by two cameras. That was the most intense. So the freakiest moment I had, um, I was at a museum called Iron Island Museum in Buffalo, New York. And I was there by myself putting in a special activity for Halloween. And it was the middle of the day and I looked up and there was this large mirror that I just, I naturally don't like mirrors, they freak me out. And I actually saw like a shadowy figure dripping out of the mirror, almost like tar or ink. And I very quickly just like gathered up my supplies and like marched into a separate area that's supposed to be like the safe space. And I was not brave. I did not try to investigate. I did not try to debunk. I just got the heck out of there. My most intense moment was when I had survived a devastating car accident. And uh, while the doctors were working on me in the trauma room, I had an out of body experience. Now because the hospitals were full at the time, there was another person in the room with me who was also having an out of body experience. Uh, I survived, he did not. He attached himself to me for eight months. So you could say my most intense moment was eight months long. I have only been here a few hours and yes, Plymouth is haunted. I've been in this area a little bit, Concord area, because it's got so much history. It's got so much richness in the land. Just being on the boardwalk today, being by the replica Mayflower, being in the presence of where they landed, and the history of that, yeah, we were all trying to tap in and there's something there. So just going through Burial Hill Cemetery and looking at the dates and, you know, the, the images carved on the stone. Here you have things from the 1600s, so much life, so much story, big in life, big in death. And, you know, if you're Bob the Quiet Banker, you're Bob the Quiet Ghost. If you were some great war hero or movie star or whatever. So um, I've felt the energy since I got here. So it should be a fun weekend. I will say at my Airbnb, which is a beautiful Airbnb and very charming, I will say that I do have some resident spirits there. I, at least I can feel some presence there, but they don't want to mess with me, which is great because I don't want to mess with them. <laughs> We've walked around a little bit in Plymouth and just feeling into the different spaces and looking around you can definitely feel that Plymouth is haunted. Art is in the eye of the beholder and the creator. The Art Committee of the Kingston Public Library is seeking artists of all kinds to share their creations with the community. Whether you are a seasoned artist with a prolific portfolio or just starting out on your artistic journey, please contact Gail Metcalf at the number below to find out more. Acclaimed best-selling children's book author and illustrator Jan Brett's first national tour in four years will take place at Plymouth Patuxent Museums on Friday, November 24th from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. Author of over 40 picture books with more than 44 million in print, Jan is renowned for her exquisite art, which is universally recognized as being among the finest in children's books today. Her detailed and iconic illustrations are often inspired by her many extensive research expeditions, whether it be to Norway, Botswana, Japan, or India. Jan's work has been chosen as Best Children's Book of the Year by The New Yorker, Parents Magazine, Red Book, and many others. Jan Brett will do a 20 to 30 minute drawing demonstration and presentation before hosting a book signing. Everyone is invited to come to the presentation and receive as many signed book plates as they request. Come enjoy the experience of this special book launch combined with additional themed activities, including seasonally inspired cookies and a storied book walk through the museum's fields to explore the ways people and animals have kept warm through New England winters. Meet some of the animals featured in this author's new collection of winter favorites. The first 100 families in line for this event will receive a free signed Jan Brett poster. For tickets, contact the Plymouth Patuxent Museum's website. Every year, the ghosts, goblins, and cute kids in costumes gather for the mildly frightening Alden House Haunted House. We popped up at this historic location to talk to attendees about the event and all things Halloween. Hi, I'm 
I'm Tiff Phillips from the local scene, and we're here at the annual Alden Haunted House, where we're gonna see ghosts, goblins, and cute kids in costumes. It's gonna be a great night. Let's see what these folks have to say. I'm with Desiree Mobed, the executive director for Alden Historic Site. Thank you so much for having us oh, back. We are thrilled to have you here. It's really always a treat to put on this event and have you all as part of it to be able to share all these wonderful stories of happy Halloweening. <laughs> 21 successful years. What's that like for you? It feels like a big accomplishment, I'm sure. Oh my goodness. Um, so we tell the, um, you know, because this relies a lot on volunteers um, and, you know, a lot of the seniors who are doing a community service hours and we tell them look we've raised a generation this event is older than you are oh my gosh that's <laughs> so, amazing and it's just wonderful to hear people's stories over the years you know of how the event has evolved and you know that just that that sharing of the Alden house in this very special way and what do you think keeps people coming back every year? Oh, people love Halloween. Oh, yeah. and, you know, and, and the Alden family was always about family. And this is about, you know, family as well. Having fun in the community and bringing kids here and just, you know, seeing their smiles, a few squeals. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Thank you again for having us back. Oh, thank you for, very much. We really appreciate it. I'm with Rianne, who is the intern for the Alden Historic Site. So nice to meet you. What is it like being an intern here? It is really great being an intern here. Um, this is my second year. The Haunted House is definitely our biggest event by far. Um, I'm here every Friday, and it's super fun to meet all of the Alden descendants and work with Desiree. She's absolutely amazing. And how do you... So how do you like the haunted house? Is it a fun experience for you every year? It is a really fun experience. This is my second year doing it. I am a guide this year, as you can see, all in my colonial garb. Um, but yeah, I haven't had a chance to go through the house yet. But last year we did a really fun theme, and this year we're doing a naval theme. And I was going to say, you guys are going through later to do oh, all that. Oh yeah, yeah, you better believe it. <laughs> yeah, everyone can see it later. <laughs> My new friend Jimmy here. Jimmy, you gotta. I gotta tell you, I'm really excited about your costume. You're in the haunted house, the haunted trail this year. Yep. And I gotta ask you, what is your favorite holiday tradition for Halloween? Um, I like scaring little kids and getting candy. What kind of candy is your favorite? Um, Reese's. Reese's. Good choice. Good choice. Now I gotta ask you, peanut butter cups or Reese's pieces? Peanut butter cups. Oh yeah, that's the way to go. High five. I'm with Miss Avery over here. I gotta ask you, what is your favorite Halloween candy? Probably either Jelly Ranchers or Starburst. Okay. I like both. What flavor of each do you like? So I really like watermelon, blue raspberry, and cherry um, Jelly Ranchers. And then I like every single Starburst. So why'd you come here tonight? Um, just to, just to spend time with my family and friends, I guess. I'm with my new friend Ryan. Now, Ryan, I gotta ask you about your Halloween costume. What are you? Ninja. A ninja? That's amazing. So, can you actually do ninja moves? Maybe. Can I see one? What? That kick is fierce. That's awesome. Now, what is your favorite Halloween candy? Uh, prob uh, Starburst. Starburst? What flavor? Um, the pink one. The pink one's really good. I don't even know what the pink one is. Is that a watermelon? Probably. Probably. I don't know. So are or bubblegum. <laughs> or bubblegum. Are you going trick-or-treating this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. To like have like some fun with like my family and sister. You like hanging out with your family and your sister? That's awesome. Give me a low five. Thank you. I'm with Michael and Lauren. I have to know, Lauren, first of all, you said you like scary movies, right? Yeah. So would you ever stay in a haunted house? Yes, I would because I love creepy things. I like mysteries and I like getting creeped out so I can learn a lesson never to do it again. I love it, what a great answer. What about you, Michael? Uh, probably yes, because I could connect with old spirits. 
That's pretty good. You guys are fun. I like you. I would stay in a haunted house with you both. Can I ask a little bit about your costume? What's your What's your costume? Slappy from Goosebump. Great pick. And you? Uh, the Plague Doctor. A Plague Doctor. It's good. Good time for it. Good time for it. Now, what's your favorite Halloween candy? I would say Reese's Pieces. Good choice. Milky Way. Oh, nice. Actually, I think I like Butterfinger. Oh, Butterfingers are good too. Are you thinking you're going to be scared tonight? No. Why is that? Because I've seen ghosts many of times and I'm not lying. Okay, I like it. I like that bravery. Thank you so much. Now I need to ask you, what is your favorite candy? My favorite candy is Nerds and Gummy Bears. Ooh, very nice. What's your favorite Halloween candy? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Me neither. Like, you guys don't know that's I, okay. I like it all, but one of my favorites is Reese's. Reese's is good. Peanut butter cups or Reese's pieces? Pieces. All of them. <laughs> now, what is your favorite candy? Um, I really like candy corn and Jolly Ranchers. You're a person who likes candy corn? I feel like a lot of people don't like candy corn. You're special like that. I love it. It's like, I like some of it, but if I have a lot, it's just like, I just, stop like yeah it's pure sugar yeah that makes sense what about you um so there's like this new store um near like uh ventral ones and Namaste. it's like an ireland candy shop and the candy's really good Ooh. there's like these like crunch bars and like different chips and they're just really good i think the crunch bars are really good i tried them today they're just really good I all think right well i'm go going there after this i mean yeah <laughs> you guys are selling it for me i'm with mr gunner i gotta ask you what is your favorite candy Airheads. Airheads? What kind of airheads? Cherry. Cherry? Oh, cherry's a good one. I'm a mystery person. I like to guess my flavor. And what are you doing this year for Halloween? Trick or treating. You're trick or treating? Excellent. Are you going to wear your Pikachu costume? And how much candy do you think you're going to get tonight? A lot. A lot? How much? Like this much? Show me what you're yeah. That's a lot of candy. Well, it was so nice talking to you. Happy Halloween. Ah! Do it again. Ah, awesome. So I need to know something very important. What is your favorite candy? Twix. Twix? Um, I like gummies, um, lollipops, and Jolly Rings. Whoa, we got a list there. <laughs> yeah. I need to know what is your favorite candy? Um, sometimes I can't decide, but probably like Reese's or Hershey's. Reese's peanut butter cups or Reese's pieces? Probably peanut butter cups. Good choice, good choice. What about you, my friend? Lollipops. Lollipops? What kind of lollipops? What's your favorite flavor? Strawberry. And what are you going to be for Halloween this year? A vampire. A vampire? Nice. You're going to have all the blood and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> now, what are you guys going to be for Halloween this year? I'm being, like, a karate person. A nice karate person. And I'm going to be Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. Oh, I love Dorothy. Can you uh, click your heel three times? Show me how to click. Very nice. What is your favorite Halloween candy? Um, I'd say maybe some gummies and Kit Kats. Gummies and Kit Kats, nice. Some type of chocolate. Oh, anything chocolate girl after my own heart. What are you guys gonna be for Halloween this year? We're going to be leopards. You're gonna be leopards? Both of you are gonna be leopards? Uh, yes, they're footy pajamas, but we're gonna wear them. Oh, they're gonna be nice and warm. What's the best costume you've ever had? Well, most of my my years, like trick or treating, I've been a witch. One year I was a pirate. Oh, nice. And then this year I'm Barbie. So I'm probably gonna say Barbie. I like my Halloween costume this year, but I also really liked when I was um, Cinderella when I was like five. Oh, I love that. That's super fun. Have you guys been through the trail yet? Yeah, we yeah. work at the trail. Oh, you work at the trail. What's that like, scaring people? Um, it's fun. Yeah, I lay on the ground, and when people come, I just grab their legs. That That is terrifying. When that gives them popcorn, then dance in front of them, but then I follow them and snap sticks and tap them, and at oh the end, I scare them. Now, did you guys go through the haunted trail? Yeah. Um, yeah. How was it? 
good. It was good. It, there wasn't any jump scares, but then now we're hearing like a ton of people screaming, so we might go again. And oh, you totally should go again. That's super fun. Did you guys already go through the maze yet, or how was it? I haven't. You I went twice. You went twice? That's amazing. Which one? Did you do the trail, the maze, or the house? The maze. The maze. How was it? It was fun. Am I going to be super scared? Uh, they probably won't see you because you're just up in all black. Ah, uh, fair enough. So I can sneak behind them and I can avoid being scared. I'm with Jay, who actually decorated for the event. She's been doing it for three years. She's going to take me on through the maze. Let's go. Let's go. I'm feeling my, my favorite part of the maze, the headless horses. Oh, I love it. It's pretty good. And there's some creepy crawly guy over here. City. Oh, oh, hey, yeah. Yeah. oh, So we're gonna we're gonna. Did you recognize them? The corridor, as I call it. The corridor. The corridor. Uh, I don't know where they might jump out of. Oh gosh. <laughs> I startle easily. Yeah, I startle easily too. I might scream like a three-year-old. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> it's really hard to put things in here and hope that everyone can see them, so you try to put the bright stuff in the dark. Oh, like ah! <laughs> so there's also, a, there's also a little corridor down here. Walking around. Oh. So some of the figures are supposed to represent the dead sailors from the story that's in the house. Oh, that's so, brilliant. And it's the story of the Arnold and the seven sailors that drowned and froze. So that's what some of the figures are supposed to represent. Watch your head. <laughs> so down this corridor is the graveyard for our dead sailors. Do you guys always have a theme? We always have a theme in the house, um, and we try to have the maze somewhat mirror that theme if we can. So last year we did Salem, because John Alden was actually convicted of witchcraft, John Alden Jr. was I didn't convicted of witchcraft in Salem, was jailed and escaped before he was to be hanged, and was on the run for about a year. Um, they don't know if he was here in Duxbury or if he was in um, New York, somewhere in New York where he had family and he was exonerated, but he would have been hung. Wow, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. So that was last year. This year, again, it's the wreck of the Brig Arnold, the 70 sailors that died, Revolutionary War era ship um, coming out of Boston, founded off of uh, Clarks Island in Plymouth oh. Harbor. And the townspeople could hear them screaming and couldn't get to them because of the storm. And by the time they got out there, a, a day and a half later, they were frozen. So Whoa. it's really a very creepy story. So they brought them into town, Brooke, to thaw them out because they were frozen in like hunched over positions and they thawed them in town brook and put them in the 1740 courthouse and then buried them in the mass grave on burial hill seven of them yep so that's the story they're doing in the house the more you know, the more you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> my lovely so coffee i'm so good i'm like so good wow. i'm so hideous oh my god So this is another one of the sailor figurines. So we tried to, you know, cover them in fishnet and sort of, you know, have that theme going <laughs> on. But... And then we're back into the main room with the horse. <laughs> Very cool. How long does this take you to put together? It took about, I was, over the course of three days, I'd say it took about 15 hours. Wow. Um, one day was just running all the cords and lights and, it, and making sure that we didn't blow any fuses. There's uh, about 500 feet of, of extension cord running through here, so yeah, it's... Well, this is amazing. Great job. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I have more fun doing it than I think than the kids have <laughs> going through it. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Thank you so much, Jay. I really welcome. appreciate you showing me around. <laughs> with Steve, who's one of the guides here at the Alden Historic Site. So you're a historic reenactor. That's exciting. Yes. How long have you been doing that for? My wife and I started the New Plymouth Guard 11 years ago. And you're captain of that, correct? Oh, that's right, yeah. So you do Thanksgiving parade and that's... Yeah, we're gearing up for that right now. How long have you been doing that? That this will be our 11th year. 11th year, that's incredible. So what do you like about being a historic reenactor? Well, I'm interested in the history and I like bringing it to people, having them get a different perspective on the world. 
That's amazing. So uh, in addition to Plymouth, you're also here during your time? I've been working as a guide here at the Alden House in Duxbury this summer, and I'm really enjoying doing it. So you must be full of knowledge. Well, it is fun because you get a lot of questions about a lot of different topics. I got to ask, what is your favorite fact about Alden House? Uh, the fact that the same family has owned it for almost 400 years. It's pretty amazing. That is pretty amazing. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All righty. So I need to know, would you ever stay over in a haunted house? Um, I would say no. Why is that? I've never liked haunted houses. I think they're too creepy. They're too creepy. And what about you, sir? By yourself or with somebody? Oh, what are you, Mike? <laughs> by yourself or with somebody? Um, let's say by yourself. No. Never? Then no. Really? Are you scared of ghosts? No. I'm with Finn and Gavin. I gotta ask you, first of all, your costumes are amazing. I love the mask. I love your soldier-esque thing. I'm appreciating this. Um, I gotta ask you, what's your favorite Halloween tradition? Um, Mine is... Mine is, he said scaring people. Mine, mine is probably like, probably doing this or trick or treating. Nice, and have you guys been through the maze yet? Uh, yeah. yeah, so. Am I gonna be scared? I'm very jumpy, am I gonna be scared? I need to know. I don't know, but. <laughs> uh oh, I'm scared now, okay. And what is your favorite Halloween tradition? Um, I just really like going trick or treating. <laughs> Wonderful, and you? Um, like, <laughs> no, trick or treating. All right, guys, so I have to know, what is your favorite Halloween tradition? Uh, I don't like any candy. I'm on a diet. You're on a diet? <laughs> Do you have any diet candy? Is there diet candy that you can eat? Uh, well, the really stuff I can eat right now for me, um, probably apples and grapes. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of like candy. Hilarious. And what about you? Uh, probably trick-or-treating and booing people. And, and what else? Booing people. Booing people? <laughs> so do you like scaring people? Um, yeah. It's like, in my neighborhood, we get like a treat basket and we put it at someone's door and then ding-dong and run away. That's really nice. I like that. That's a great tradition. I'm with Miss Faye. Miss Faye, can I ask you, what is your favorite Halloween tradition? Um, going trick-or-treating and getting the candy. How much candy do you usually get? A lot? Yes. Yeah, and what's your favorite kind of candy? Kit Kat. Kit Kat? Awesome. And you're a cheerleader, both in real life and on Halloween? Yes. Do you have a favorite cheer? Um, no. No, you don't have a favorite cheer? How long have you been cheerleading for? Two years. Two years, that's impressive. Uh, you really like it? Yeah. Well, happy Halloween, can I get a high five? Awesome, thank you. Can I ask you, what is your favorite Halloween tradition? Probably trick or treating or pumpkin carving. Very nice. Um, I like trick or treating and like dressing up in costumes. Can I ask about your costume? Um, I'm a skeleton pirate. Is this the best costume you've ever had, or do you have others that have been favorites? Last year, I really liked I was a zombie cheerleader. Oh, I like that. And what about you? What was your fa favorite costume you've ever had? I think this year's pretty cool. Yeah? What are you going to be this year for Halloween? A blue stick man. A blue stick man? I don't even know what that is. Can you explain that to me? It's like a full-on black costume with light up blue glow sticks, kind of. I love it. That's so fun. I never hear stuff like that. I am with Evelyn and Lawrence. What is your favorite Halloween tradition? Mine wow. is twicker tweeting and going through people's yards, getting scared and having candy. Oh my gosh, you go through people's yards? Well, as a robber, I, I respect that. And what about you? Mine is checker treating. Someone's here. I've got shit. Can I ask you, what's your favorite Halloween tradition? Hmm. I really like to go trick-or-treating every year. I love it. 
I like haunted houses. You like haunted houses like this one? Now you gotta know, is was this one super scary? Um, it wasn't scary, but it was like really like I feel like it was more like I don't get scared that easily, I feel like it was more like 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 good acting and stuff. Oh good. Yeah. I love that. I think it's like a fun moment to like go with friends or family. What you guys got? Yeah. I got a rock. <laughs> I already ate my Doritos. Oh, no. Yeah. More candy. Ooh, I got Twizzlers, Lollipop, and Kit Kat that I've been milking for all night. Do you guys hear sirens? Hey! You stole our candy! For more events and other information about the Alden Historic Site, visit alden.org. Winter is coming, which means it's time for colds, germs, and lots of tissues. Along with getting your COVID shot, keeping up to date with immunizations is a surefire way to beat illnesses that may come your way during the colder months. And now you can do both by visiting the Duxbury Senior Center on November 17th from 9 to 11 a.m., where Osco Pharmacy will be on site to distribute vaccines and immunization screenings. To register for your spot, visit the Duxbury Senior Center website. It's no surprise that people who produce media also are avid consumers, and the genre of horror is the timely topic of this next piece. Local scene cinephiles share their picks for top tier in terror. It's the time of pumpkin spice, apple picking, and leaves changing color. This is October. And in between jack-o'-lanterns or Halloween parties, there's one constant that we all partake in watching scary movies. We've asked our Pack TV staff here to discuss horror movies that have made an impact on them. Whether it be a cursed videotape, a monster hunter, or an urban legend, our staff came up with some spooky selections that will keep you up at night. Each day for 13 days, we'll be releasing a video with our staff discussing a horror movie or two that made an impact on them. Whether it's beyond our world, whether it's things that go bump in the night or an ancient curse, Horror is the one genre that has never failed to entertain us, make us think, and best of all, scare us. Welcome to the 13 Days of Halloween. It's iconic. Mm -hmm. Like, it really is. It's part of our consciousness. I mean, the here's Johnny line as he's breaking through the door. Uh, it really is. And it's also just beautifully made. It's stunning. I mean, the location itself, the, the hotel is a character in itself. Mm. It's beautiful. It's just cin cinematically just gorgeous. And this isolation, of course, that plays a huge theme. Of course. And I think that might be the only horror film that Jack Nicholson had actually participated in, maybe other than The Witches of Eastwick. I mean, granted, he's always been a little creepy himself. Like, there's something just offset, off-putting about Jack Nicholson, and, and we've all felt it. And I think this really brought out the whole-fledged creepiness of him. And just tears into that role like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> and it's Stanley Kubrick. Oh, genius. Which, from what I understand, The Shining, the book, is different from The Shining, the movie. Completely different. Is it? It's completely different. The whole feel is different. I, I honestly like, it's very rare that I say this, but I like the movie better than the book. I think a lot of people did. Yeah. Well, I'm told that the TV version is more aligned with what the book was supposed to tell as a story versus the film. I couldn't get over the fact that it was the guy from Wings, so that was... <laughs> that was and a mouth instead of an axe. Yes, exactly. What was the point? Yeah. Okay. When did you see both films? Um, and why did you want to talk about it? I'm going to age myself here. I came from the VHS generation. Yeah, I did too. All right, so you have an appreciation when you into a video store, you look at the artwork for hours yes. in the aisle. Mm -hmm. Horror was a forbidden thing for me. Mm -hmm. I wasn't allowed to watch it. So of course, what happens when a kid is forbidden from doing something, mm -hmm. they're gonna want it even more. So I would scan the backs of these VHS covers for hours, just looking at the gruesome photos. And there was something perverse about it. And Creepshow always stood out to me. Okay. And then one day I ended up renting it on VHS and had a sleepover at my friend's house. And it's like my mind was just ripped apart. I couldn't believe what I saw. Yeah. It was like Twilight's on the movie. It was mm -hmm. this anthology story where each story is compact and succinct enough. Yes. That's entertaining, doesn't slow down, and moves on to the next story. Yes. Plus there's a wicked sense of imagination because... And humor. It's in, yes, and it's inspired by the DC Comics, so there are these animated panels. Yes. Plus you get to see Stephen King act. Yes. Which he is actually, rare. 
did a good job. He did. Genuinely did a good job. And his son is a little boy in the beginning and the end. Yep. Yes, who's now a writer. He wrote The Black Phone yep. with Ethan yeah. Hawke. So just bear in mind, Grindhouse is a three-hour film, two movies with fake trailers. Yes. Which you'd have to have a lot of patience to see that. Yes. Do you remember the first time you watched that film? Films. Yeah, yeah. It was in the theater uh, here in Kingston. I, actually, you and I and Dan uh, went out and saw it. The whole experience was part of what made it my favorite horror movie. On top of that, it was just jam-packed with so much, like, over-the-top horror. You could tell the people who put the time to make the movie just like loved what they did and just had so much fun with with what they did you know and here we were seeing a movie that was released or as a nod to a generation before us oh yes we grew up in the age of the multiplex we didn't know what that was like to go to a drive-in like that or to see a cheap movie on an afternoon for like a dollar yeah and that's amazing that we were able to experience that because that's what tarantino and rodriguez grew up on it's always interesting to me to see like perhaps maybe what the director's fears are, right? Because yes. I think what a director adds to the film or what the writer adds to the film is maybe their internal fears. Yes. So it's always interesting to me to see that and yeah. you know how they relate that to the world. So what would you guess the internal fear is? Um, I mean, I think there's multiple in this in this yeah. movie. You know, I think it's monsters. I think it's it's dogs. But mo most importantly, I think it's um like self identity. I think okay. in, in this film, like the. Uh, Figuring out what's real and like what's yeah. not real was a huge part of this movie yeah. for uh, for you know Sam Neill's characters. So. Yeah, and it, they say this in the beginning, so I can say it, which yep. is someone says something about oh, yes. san sanity and insanity. They flip. Yes, they can exactly. flip, and then the sane becomes insane because they're in the minority. Yep, yep. So maybe the insane are actually mm -hmm. the sane. Yeah, at least in this reality. Fiends. Yes. Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitched: A History of Folk Horror is like a three and a half our documentary about folk horror as a subgenre, mm. directed by um, Kayla Jan uh, Janice. Um, and basically, it's a tour of the subgenre from its origins. It creates a thesis about what it is, how to define it, and it takes you on a tour of different parts of the world and how they differ or how similar they are and what um, culturally and um, socially they mean. And we've all seen a fair amount of folk horror, especially in like the 60s and 70s. Yes, and it's coming back for good reason. Really? Yes, so it's coming back because in terms of um, whenever we're not feeling good about the future, we're in turbulent times, such as the 70s and the 60s, yeah. we look to the past. So folk horror always ask, is the past actually as rosy, rosy as we think, uh, remember it as? And the question is no. It's been romanticized. It's been romanticized, and um, folk horror is a reaction to that. Well, The Wicker Man, they're going back to an older time. Yes. Not really understanding that yeah. this is very sinister. They had done this marketing campaign that was largely online where they set up a, a, a website that was, it, it, it was basically trying to get to the bottom of, of what had happened to these missing filmmakers that had gone missing out in the woods. And they, they did all these fake police reports and they, they would release stuff like, oh, we found the guy's car in this ditch near the woods. What could be happening? So it was, it was meta in a way that most movies at the time had not been. Um, it, was, it was somewhat unique for the time. And having seen it in the theaters back then, um, people maybe, there was kind of a misconception about it that, that audiences at the time thought that it was real. Mm -hmm. And nobody thought that it was actually, that there was like a real Blair Witch or anything. Mm -hmm. But there was, going into it, you weren't 100% certain. Can I have some? I really want some of that. I think that's a health code violation. That's, you know, you're scared of a health code violation. I mean, that's not very in the spirit of the holiday. But I'm more of a Christmas gal. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, for that time period and what Toby Hooper kind of did with the the budget of that film was so low, mm -hmm. they had to make a lot of low budget decisions. Um, and one of the things that ended up happening was 
that they had this knife that was supposed to like draw blood and like push blood out of the tip, but it wasn't working, uh, probably because of the insane conditions that they were working in the yes. heat of Texas. And they essentially tried cutting the finger and it wouldn't push out the blood. So what they ended up doing is they got a real knife and they actually cut their finger on screen, real blood, real finger cut. And for me, that's a little too extreme. That's a little too yeah. intense. I, I probably wouldn't be able to do that if I ever yeah. tried making a film like that. But like, yeah. that's some serious dedication to the craft for real. Like. Yeah. I hope they had a first aid box. I, I hope so too. Mm -hmm. I hope so too. Um, and, and there's a lot of those situations that kind of happen on screen, like um, without saying who, there's a character that ends up having their face on the pavement. Nice. Um, and it's in Texas, so the pavement is hot. insanely hot, like their skin almost mm -hmm. melting off. Okay. Um, so it's just a lot of low budget, like crazy, yeah. neat tricks that they kind of had to, or, or things that they had to go through to kind of get the film off the ground in the first place. And it's this big play on, you know, good versus evil because there's a certain point in the movie where he's trying to help um, Frankenstein's monster survive and live. And he sees that he's not an evil person. He's not bad. And that is one of the biggest lines that he says of, I have to make sure that, you know, who I'm killing are actually evil. And he's not evil. He's just a misunderstood lost He's soul. misunderstood. And, you know, Van Helsing is misunderstood, too, because, you know, he was somebody that, quote unquote, murders people. Because to the eyes of the public, monsters don't exist. They only see what their true form was after they've died. So they always just assume Van Helsing's a murderer. He's not saving them. He's just killing people. So it's this big back and forth of, you know, what is good and what is bad. What's your favorite scene in Nightmare? Um, I guess that's kind of the ending, to be honest with you. Nancy comes out to, to the car, mm -hmm. and the car is like, you know, a red car, thinks that, that she's defeated Freddy Krueger. She opens it, gets in with all her friends and everything, and then the soft top comes up, and it's like the it's colors. same colors of the sweater and everything, mm -hmm. and it just fits, I think it ties in so well. I thought that was a great way to end the movie, because mm -hmm. it's like, you can't escape the dream and you can't escape the reality. Yeah. And then I think there's like an element of just kind of like a psychological like element to it that I like where it's mm -hmm. like just battling that mental, like you can't really escape it. But mm -hmm. then there's like, you want to see a way of getting out of it. And yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I like, I like about both those films. Yeah. Did you ever see, um, there's a whole YouTube channel about like ways to outsmart horror films, like other other ways of doing it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'll I think you'd like it. Out. I'll yeah. let you know. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Okay, so that about wraps it up. Um, Max, thank you for coming in from down the hallway once again. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, if you want me to call you a cab, okay. I can yeah. do that. Yeah, that'd be perfect. An Uber yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. We hope you enjoyed watching these videos as we had just as much fun making them. With Halloween right around the corner, there's plenty to watch out for. So next time, keep your porch lights on, your doors locked, and your television sets, preferably off when you're asleep. Just not near any plants. Happy Halloween. While renovating her grandmother Rose's cottage, a very pregnant Saffron Cutler discovers the remains of two bodies. Now she must protect her memory-impaired grandmother from a potential murder investigation, while also protecting herself from the perils that come with piecing together this dangerous puzzle. This plotline sets the scene for November's Pembroke Library Book Club reading, The Couple at Number 9 by Claire Douglas. The club itself will take place from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. on November 7th. For more information, visit the Pembroke Public Library website. Here's Julie Thompson with a closer look at the municipality of Pembroke. If you live in Pembroke and you've noticed that your water looks and tastes better lately, you're not imagining things. The town received a number of complaints about discolored water after a drought last summer prevented them from flushing the water mains, which usually took place once a year. This year, the town's water department cleaned out the pipes using a method called unidirectional flushing. Instead of flushing the entire system at once, workers isolated sections of the water grid to increase the amount of pressure they were able to generate. This not only did a better job of clearing out the deposits of iron and manganese that have been building up, but did so in about half as much time as usual.
The Water Department is now planning to flush the system out twice a year instead of annually, as part of their effort to keep Pembroke's water clean for years to come. It's a busy time for Pembroke's parks. Along with the completed work at the Herring Run Park to improve handicap accessibility, the town recently received a grant that will improve accessibility for a different group, the Herrings themselves. In order to navigate dams and other obstacles, they rely on several fish ladders throughout the town, some of which have fallen into disrepair over the years. Fortunately, Senator Susan Moran recently stopped by a meeting of the select board to present a $25,000 grant, which will go towards bringing the ladders back up to code for the Pembroke's fish population. Earlier this year, Pembroke formed a committee to develop a new master plan for the town, a document outlining goals and an overall direction for the town going into the future. Over the summer, the Master Plan Collaboration Committee held a forum at Pembroke High School, as well as conducting a survey online to hear from residents about their concerns surrounding the challenges facing the town and changes that they'd like to see. Over the next months, the committee will go over ways to implement these recommendations before finalizing a new master plan in 2024. You can follow their progress by watching their meetings, which are posted on the town's website and covered by us here on the local scene by PAC TV. This has been a closer look at some of the municipal happenings in Pembroke. Join the Plymouth Philharmonic Orchestra for an evening of breathtaking music at the Plymouth North High School Performing Arts Center on November 4th with guest violinist Julianne Lee. The Phil will be gifting your ears with Appalachian Spring, a bright and youthful composition by Aaron Copeland, and Tchaikovsky's Lush Violin Concerto. In addition to the concert, attendees will be given the opportunity to add to their experience with a pre-concert talk with conductor Stephen Curdianis. And for those who don't want the night to end so soon, there is an additional option for an after-show dessert reception. Tickets can be purchased by visiting the Phil's website. The art of felting is a relatively new medium that involves using a long, thin needle and wool to sculpt shapes and figures. On November 17th, join in on this fun and user-friendly craft at the Art Complex Museum from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. At this class, artist Betty Green will teach you the fundamentals of needle felting through observation and practice as you let the wool become your paint. Supplies and beverages will be provided, but make sure to pack your own lunch. To register for your spot, visit artcomplex.org. Here's a word from Donald Colon, director of the Kingston Public Library. Hello, my name is Donald Colon, and I am the director of the Kingston Public Library here in Kingston, Massachusetts. I would like to personally welcome you to the library and to promote registering for library cards. Library cards provide an opportunity for lifelong learning for patrons of all ages. With a library card, patrons not only can check out their favorite books and movies where they can explore new worlds, learn new skills, or be exposed to new ideas, but they can also reserve discounted museum passes, check out items from our Library of Things collection, including puzzles and games, and use many of our digital resources. Children may now register for new library cards in the children's room. Patrons of all ages can register for cards at the Circulation Desk. We look forward to seeing you at the library. What is Sunday Fun Day with the Shady Roosters? Well, they are a South Shore-based band whose song list includes a mix of rockabilly, blues, roots, country, and they have a blast performing. They will play in the lobby at the Spire Center, which is a comfortable and casual room with plenty of space for dancing, or just enjoying the music without the trappings of a downtown bar room. It's also an engaging and friendly environment. The lobby bar has three beer taps that will be serving indie firm beers, including non-alcoholic options, as well as wine and other beverages. This is a family-friendly event from 2 to 5 p.m. on Sunday, November 19th at the iconic Spire Center. Contact the Spire for tickets. Here is poet Sheila Lynch Bentonen in a reading of her original work. Our next reader is Sheila Lynch. Um, my name is Sheila Lynch Bentonen. I live in Duxbury and I'm a member of the Duxbury Poetry Circle. And I'm going to read one short haiku two short stories, thank you stories, 
and a poem. The first haiku is about this morning. I wrote it this morning. Gorgeous red sunrise, wildfires in Canada, beauty and the beast. <laughs> and um, the second is a thank you story. I don't know if you know, but um, Katie Thayer and Michelle Manwire own Uva Wine Bar, and they live in Duxbury. And Katie has a son, Austin, who just turned 21. I have a daughter, Molly, who's at the bar and thoroughly embarrassed by her mother. <laughs> and she just turned 21. And Michelle has a daughter, Olivia, who just turned 21. And all three of them grew up together. So I know a lot about their families just because of ballet, theater, um, you know, since they were two. So this is my thank you story to Michelle, who's not working tonight, but hopefully she'll see this on tape. Um, Michelle bought three tickets to Taylor Swift at Gillette in 2015 before you needed to rob a bank to go see Taylor Swift at Gillette. And she asked her daughter, Olivia, who's the third person? She said, Molly, Molly, my daughter. So Molly said, came home, Molly, I'm going to Taylor Swift. She was 15. She was beyond thrilled. And um, a month passed and Michelle, Olivia, um, came to our door and Olivia was dressed, dressed as a Swifty, if you know what that means, you know, pink and this and that and that. Her mother, Michelle, was dressed as a Swifty. Molly was dressed as a Swifty. And off they drove to Gillette Stadium. And I was so happy that Molly got to see Taylor Swift. All night, I got text messages. Mommy, she's playing this song. And she would send me a little video. And she, there was a new singer, Shawn Mendes, who's now popular, who's the opening act. Mommy, have you ever heard of Shawn Mendes? He's so cute. And she played a little video of him singing. And then Michelle dropped them off, about midnight it was. So this was eight years ago, and it was so, such a memorable night for me and my daughter. And I wanted to thank Michelle, who's not here tonight. My second thank you story is for Katie Thayer, who might be standing <laughs> right there by, by the wine bar. So Katie's son, she has another son who's older, but her son Austin, who's 21, grew up since age two with my daughter Molly. And I have many, many stories, so many stories, but the one I remember most is Austin wanted to go look at colleges. And he um, wanted to look at Roger Williams in Rhode Island. He called or texted Molly, do you want to come with me so we can have fun while my mother drives us to Roger Williams? And I had already taken my daughter to Boston University, serious chemistry program, and she was highly on the fence about that program. And we went to other colleges. But she came back from Katie Thayer's road trip to Roger Williams and said, Mom, that's where I'm going. And Katie had spent all day showing Austin who also ended up at Roger Williams. And um, when we went again later, I said, what finally convinced you about Roger Williams? Well, Katie's road trip and cute boys and good food. <laughs> so my daughter, who now I've thoroughly embarrassed at the bar, um, is graduating in chemistry next year because of Katie's road trip. So that's my thank you to Katie. I, I don't know as freshmen if, if that would have happened. So Katie and Michelle were in the Caribbean 
Baham Grand Cayman as friends, um, and they went to a self-pour wine bar, and they had a few glasses, and they said, we could do this in Plymouth. And that's how this bar was born. And there's many other stories about Katie and Michelle that I won't talk about, but, <laughs> but this poem is called Uva Wine Bar. Uva Wine Bar grew out of a dream, two women in the Caribbean hatching a business scheme. I know Katie, I know Michelle. I know some of their heavens, I know some of their hell. Bonding as women do over wine, they learn to work through pain and how to make a day sunshine. I watched all their children grow. They grew up with my daughter. Now the kids are adultish and they glow. I do not know the difference between a Cabernet and a Sauvignon Blanc, but people at tables drinking wine, you can take to the bank. So lift a glass to these two. You, dr you drink wine here tonight because of their friendship that grew. <laughs> and that's what's good and good to know on the local scene this week. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. We are grateful for your attention. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe to The Local Scene here and share everywhere. Thank you, friends.